10,000 B.C. The voice we hear is that of Conan, Conan the Barbarian, telling his story. The ancient times he speaks of are times of violence, of cruelty of man toward man, of destruction of whole peoples, of things that have not changed enough with the passage of time. I was but a young lad as I stood on the hill with my mother, listening in fascination to the words of my father as he worked at his anvil on a mighty sword of steel. This sword, the greatest work of my life, shall someday be yours, Conan, for you are my son, and someday you too must learn the secret of steel. Steel is strength, steel is power, steel is life. Fire and wind are gifts from the gods of the sky, but the secret of steel comes from Krom, who lives in the earth. Krom is your god. Are you listening, lad? Yes, father. Then hear this too. Let shamans and fools worship Krom if they will, but he is a cruel god who cares nothing for the suffering of men. Learn only the secret of steel from Krom, and you will have no more need for him. Your sword will be your soul. The next day, I was to learn for myself the true meaning of the word suffering. The Barniers, a savage warrior tribe from the north, attacked our village without warning, without mercy. My father's sword found the heart of many a treacherous Barnier, but there were too many to withstand. And in the end, he was torn to ribbons by a horde of Barnier warhounds. The savage Barnier slew my mother before my very eyes, and flaunting their horrible snake banners, they lined up in front of the doomed village, chanting a single word, the true meaning of which I would learn only years later. Doom. Then, at a signal, the whole village was put to the torch, and I was put in chains along with the other children. And the last sight I beheld as we were led away was the heads of my parents on a pair of Varnir pikes. By Mitra, by Krom, by all the gods, I swear to you, my parents, this day shall be avenged. After endless days of trudging north through bitter wind and blinding snow, we reached Vanaheim, land of the Vanir, only to discover that our suffering had only begun. Beginning this day, you sons of Sumerian dogs shall spend the rest of your wretched lives chained to the wheel of pain, grinding grain for the tables of Vanaheim. And day after day, I strained at my spoke of the great man-killing wheel, and the weeks grew into months, and months into years, and all the others died. I alone, nurtured by my insatiable desire for revenge, grew stronger and survived into full manhood. And then one day... You, Sumerian, you are my slave now, and you will come with me. Guard and chain him. Yes, sire. By this time, I had become what some called a giant of a man. And when we arrived at my new owner's castle... I learned soon enough why he had brought me there. Into the pit with him! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Prodding me with their spears, his men forced me down into a gigantic fighting pit. Glowering at me across the pit was a huge monster of a man, snarling through hideous pointed teeth, filed razor sharp, his deep-set eyes aflame with raging hate. Prepare to die, barbarian dog. Your first pit fight will be your last. With a fury of a panther, he lunged for my throat, and the battle was on. Look, the barbarian is down. Mugen has him by the throat. Ah, we've been robbed. This fight's finished before it's even started. No, look, he's up. The barbarian is up. He's tossed Mugen right over on his back. But Mugen was up on his feet in an instant. This time, Sumerian, there is no escape. I'll destroy you. And he charged head down with a ferocity that nearly caved in my chest. Dog, I'm a dog. If the wheel of pain could not destroy me, neither can you. By the blood of Krom, I'll destroy you first. The barbarian, look. He's lifting Mogum right up over his head. He's hurling him head first against the wall of the pit. Ah! He isn't moving. Mugam is dead. And now, 
The bloodthirsty crowd was cheering for me, the pit fighter, the gladiator, killer of men. And from that day, I had to go on killing in battle after battle. I was taught the art of war by masters, and learned languages, and writing, and the love of women. And living was easier. Yet I was still a prisoner, caged behind bars. And the yearning to be free burned stronger than ever in my heart. Then one night, there was a deep rumbling in the earth, and the floor beneath my feet began to tremble and shake. It is the earth giants. They're going to destroy us. Run for your lives. The terrified Bonniers guarding me started to run, but were crushed in their tracks by falling rocks. Yet I was unharmed, and suddenly I saw the bars of my prison fall away, and the road to freedom open up before my eyes. I must run from this place as far and as fast as my legs will carry me. And I fled wildly through snow-filled forests, frozen rivers, and ice-bound tundra. But over the sound of crunching snow and the clanking of the broken slave chain still hanging from my wrist, there rose a more menacing sound. A sound that sent a chill through my bones. The howl of a wolf pack on my trail. And soon I was on the hill, and I turned just in time to see the leader of the pack, fangs bared in a ferocious snarl, leap to the attack. One swing of my chain was enough to discourage him, but I knew I couldn't hold off the entire pack. So I backed away, hoping to find protection behind some rocks, when suddenly the ground gave way beneath my feet, and I fell into a deep pit, leaving a pack of snarling, frustrated wolves waiting above me. By crawl, what manner of place have I fallen into? At first, I could see nothing in the darkness. Until with a flint and steel from my girdle, I started a fire and looked around. It's a cave. An enormous cavern. And on the walls, bold carvings and signs. Remnants of some ancient, long-forgotten race. Suddenly in the shadows, my eye caught sight of a giant warrior, seated astride a throne, casting a huge shadow in the wall behind him. Who are you? And what is this place? I demanded imperiously. But he sat immobile and said nothing. I moved closer. Speak, or by the gods I'll... And then I realized the seated figure had long since spoken his last words and fought his last battle. Astride that huge throne sat the skeletal remains of an ancient king, sheathed in copper armor, tarnished with age. And across his lap, a sword, a magnificent sword, fit for a king. But now it is mine. I, and the first blow I shall strike with it, will be to free myself at last from this cursed chain. And raising the mighty sword high above my head, I brought it down with such force that a single blow was sufficient to shatter the last link to my years of bondage in the land of the Bonnier. Climbing out of that pit of eternal darkness, for a moment I just stood still, luxuriating in the golden light of day. But in an instant the calm was shattered by a sound that would freeze the blood of any man. They waited for me to return, and now they're closer for the kill. And then I remembered my father being torn apart by the Vanir hounds, and spurred on by that bitter memory. I lay about me with my sword, with an unbounded fury that laid every savage attacker dead in a circle around me. It is finished, over by Crom, and perhaps now my life can enter on a new beginning. Fashioning a warm cloak out of the pelts of the dead wolves, I made ready for the final phase of my escape. But in my heart, I knew I would not be at peace with myself until I found the ones responsible for the death of my parents. Until vengeance was mine. The long years of imprisonment in the land of the brutal Vanir were behind me forever. And ready for whatever lay ahead, I set out on a long march south. It was dusk when I found myself at the edge of a clearing in the woods. And there, nestled against the side of a hill, I saw a hut of stone and sod, smoke rising from the chimney. And standing in the doorway, a strangely beautiful woman. Come in, stranger. Would you not like to warm yourself by my fire? Aye, that I would. Whence come you? I am Cimmerian. You are a barbarian slave from the north. I can see it in your eyes. 
And where do you go? South, where it's warm and they don't ask questions. Aha! It was foretold you would come from the north. A man of great strength who would by his own hand become a king and would crush the snakes of the earth beneath his bared feet. Snakes. Woman, did you say snakes? Snakes seem to interest you, barbarian. What is it you seek? A banner. A flag with two snakes facing each other. Over a black sun and moon? Yes, barbarian. I can tell you what you need to know. But first, take me in your arms and hold me close. It has been so long... You will find what you seek in Zamora, barbarian. Zamora, crossroads of the world. Mmm. Mmm. Ah! Crumbs, thunder! You are not a woman! You're some kind of beast! The things had become enormous claws digging into my shoulders. And what was a face of beauty became transformed into a hate-filled mask of horror with huge fangs seeking my jugular. She was a witch woman. You are dead, barbarian! Dead! Dead! Snarling and slavering, she clung to me with the strength of ten fiends until I finally tore myself free and hurled her headlong into the blazing hearth where she exploded in a blinding flash of light. A ball of fire shot from the hearth, howling and shrieking, and disappeared in the vast emptiness of the star-filled night. My crumb, this place reeks of evil. The sooner I leave it, the better. It was dawn when I was finally ready to leave. But as I stepped outside... Food... Food, I beg you, food. Ah, who the devil are you? Tied to a stake beside the hut, huddled the half-frozen figure of a man. I am Subutai, from the land of Hyrcania. Thief by profession, archer of the great order of Curlate. And I am Conan of Samaria. How came you to this miserable condition, thief? I stopped here for food and warmth, as you did, but never got past dinner. That cursed witch left me here to be dinner for her wolves. I released him and gave him food. And he was grateful. In spite of his unsavory profession, my instincts told me Subatai was a man to be trusted. And soon we set off together. Where do we travel, Cimmerian? South to Zamora. What I seek is there at the crossroads of the world. Zamora, I know it well. We ran and ran, ever south across the great steppe. Endless hours of running while he told me his story. And I told him mine. Then on the crest of a great hill, we stopped. There below us lay a beautiful city. What place is this, Subatai? We are in the land of Zamora, my friend. And yonder lies Shadizar, her capital city. Zamora. Here, O oh my parents of blessed memory, here at last may my pledge to you be fulfilled, and the evil that struck you down once and for all be destroyed in its lair. Perhaps we should rest here a while, Conan. No. I have not come this far to waste time needlessly. Soon we were in the city, wandering through the stalls of a crowded bazaar, overflowing with the good things of the earth, truly the crossroads of the world. Whatever we needed, we took, omitting only the formality of pain. Subatai had indeed turned the profession of thievery into an art. Suddenly, Subatai, listen, those drums and flutes... Aye, Conan, I hear them, and I know that sound well. Ah, look there. A religious procession of some kind. Followers of Set, God of the Serpent, a strange and sinister cult of enormous power and wealth. Strange indeed was the procession winding its way through the narrow, crowd-choked streets of the city. Men in long white robes swinging pots of burning incense. Others dressed in the helmets and armor of warriors. Youths holding undulating snakes high over their heads. And then, carried on a canopied platform, a woman of haunting beauty, wearing a huge serpent around her shoulders like a shawl. As she passed, our eyes met. You, warrior, hear me. A cleansing is coming. A great cleansing of doom. Throw down your sword. Shed your skin like the serpent. And like unto the serpent, you too will be renewed. And then she was gone. And suddenly, I heard a chant that set a chill through my body, and at the same time, a thrill of anticipation. The hated chant I had heard so long ago, now rising from the throats of white-robed men, vacant-eyed flagellants, lashing at their bodies with whips of snakeskin, chanting, always chanting. Boom! That cursed 
work like an ever-recurring nightmare. Here in Shadizar, everyone chants, blindly following the false gods of false religion. Who was that girl, Subatai? The one with a snake around her shoulders. That was no ordinary girl, my friend. That was the princess of Shadizar, a priestess of Set. Tell me more of this strange cult. The followers of Set are feared for their deceptive, murderous ways. They worship the evil god Set himself, said to be a serpent. So beware. Death could lie in wait behind those beautiful eyes of the princess. But come, there are other even greater wonders to be seen in Shadazar. We made our way through the narrow streets to the edge of the city. And suddenly I stopped, transfixed by the sight that greeted my eyes. Behold the Tower of the Serpent Conan, the Tower of Set. Within those walls, it is whispered, lies a dazzling fortune in gold and silver and jewels without end. Aye, and among them the greatest jewel of all, the Eye of the Serpent. Then what are we waiting for, friend? I would feast my eyes on such a wondrous treasure without delay. Follow me. Within minutes, we reached the great wall surrounding the tower, and in the lengthening shadows of twilight, made ready to climb the outside wall and then the tower beyond. Be careful, Cimmerian. Beyond those walls lie not only great treasures, but a great multitude of snakes. Exercising the greatest of caution, we climbed over the outer wall, but just inside. Shh! Something is moving in the bushes over there by the tower. Did you not hear it? Hey, barbarian, I heard nothing. It could be a guard. Wait here. I moved silently and swiftly toward the bush, hoping to take the fellow by surprise. But it was I who was taken by surprise. Stop, villain. One more step and you die like a stuck pig. Standing before me, sword in hand, was the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. Eyes flashing, flaxen hair flowing over her shoulders, and looking as though she knew only too well how to use the sword she held. I'll be a Kushite. You are no guard. Nay, and neither are you. Who are you, barbarian? I am Conan the Sumerian, and this is my friend Subatai, master thief and master of the bow and arrow. And what brings you here to this place? <laughs> your dress is that of a pirate, and your manner that of a queen. Who are you that asks these imperious questions? I am a queen, Valeria, queen of thieves. And again I ask, what brings you here? If you truly are a queen of thieves, you must have already divined our purpose. We have come to plunder this place. She is indeed what she says, Conan. I recognized you at once, Valeria, Queen of Thieves, but where are your men? Ha! Ah, craven cowards, all of them, superstitious fools who fear the legend of the serpent god and dare not set foot in this place. But in you, I see a pair of fools who laugh at death. Perhaps we can work together, for your purpose here is mine. Smitten by her beauty and her courage, I did not hesitate a moment in joining forces with the beautiful Valeria as we entered on an enterprise fraught with unimaginable dangers on every side. The Tower of Set, sacred temple of the serpent god, loomed ominously over us. But undaunted, we went forward with our plan. Valeria, flaxen-haired daughter of a far north kingdom, Subatai, master archer and master thief, and I... Conan of Samaria. What do you know, Samarian, of the horror beyond these walls? Nothing at all, nor do I fear them. Whatever they are, we will overcome them, and the treasure within will be ours. Good. Then go you first. I will follow, and Hyrcanian, you follow me. With a mighty throw, I hurled the grappling iron with a rope attached skyward. It caught the edge of the tower rim, and the three of us began to climb to the top. Far below, the lights of Shadazar twinkled like stars as we climbed ever higher and at last reached the top. Look, the rim of the tower, encrusted with jewels shimmering like a thousand rainbow lights. Aye, but over here, observe this opening in the roof like a bottomless pit. But these ropes descending down into the depths like ropes that carry buckets into a well, they're perfect for climbing. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. As we slid down the ropes, we could hear a deep, resonant chanting echoing from a chamber below. Valeria, who was a little ahead of us, called up to us. Look, Conan, an opening in the wall. It's a shaft leading inward. I'll follow it and see where it goes. You two find out what's down below. Subatai and I continued down, and finally our feet touched the slimy bottom, littered with rotting corpses. 
Through a narrow passageway, we followed a shaft of light that led us to a huge chamber. Above us, on the level where Valeria had remained, we could hear the voice of Yaro, high priest of Set, second in command of this cult of evil, leading the deep, rhythmic chant of the acolytes. Look, Cimmerian, up there, a young girl at the very edge. Aye, as though in a trance. If she should fall... No, she will not fall. She will jump, a willing sacrifice to the god of this foul place. I have heard of this evil practice, but never dreamt I would... Subatai, look, down here in the center of the chamber. By Mitra, what magic is this? There in the half-shadow of the great chamber we saw it. A strange altar lighting up as though at a signal, and a glow of eldritch fires and wreathed in mist. And at its center, bedazzling as the light of a hundred suns, the treasure we sought, the Eye of the Serpent. Glory to Mitra, our search is ended. Aye, but by Krama, our troubles are just beginning. Look there. Coiled around the altar, and the wondrous gem at its center, lay a slumbering serpent, vaster by far than the denizen of any nightmare, its unctuous coils twice encircling the great altar. That serpent, evil and foul enough to be the great god said himself, now what do we do? Here, hold my sword. I'll see if I can't manage to purloin that little bubble without disturbing the sleep of that slimy monster watching over it. Holding a dagger between my teeth, I moved forward toward the altar, silent as a jungle cat. Leaning with one hand on the altar's edge, I reached out slowly, slowly with the other, until finally the glittering prize was within my grasp. It's ours, Subatai. Now we can wait by crumb. There on the altar, the symbol and the banners of the destroyers of my village, the symbol of the two snakes... I think I'll borrow this little trinket and put it in my... Samirian, behind you! The warning came none too soon. The slumbering guardian of the altar was asleep no more. Fangs dripping with venom, the monstrous reptile wrapping one coil around my waist reared his ugly head high above me. He's going to strike, Conan! Look out! But as it struck, so did I, nailing its great jaws shut with the blade of my dagger as an arrow from Subatai's bow struck it in the neck. Arrows are all annoyed, barbarian! It still lives! You must slay it with the steel of your sword! Here, catch! I caught the sword just as the creature was about to strike again, and with one mighty stroke, I severed the great diamond head from its body, and the evil monster would kill no more. Just as we were about to leave, we looked up in time to see the ending of the drama being played out above us between the young girl and Yarrow, the high priest. And now the time has come. Leap, my child, into the beckoning coils of Set. I live only to do your bidding, O oh priest. <laughs> of course, of course you do, my child. I go now. As the girl's body landed on the floor where we watched horrified, Yarrow looked down and saw us and the dead serpent. Infidels! Down below, fleeing through that archway! Kill them! Kill the infidels! Climbing the ropes as fast as we could, we reached the roof only moments after Valeria, who had observed all that had transpired. The reptile worshippers are right behind us! We'll never be able to climb down in time! Forget climbing! Look down there! That pool... That's the only way out. Right, let's go. Together, now. Jump! We surfaced exulting in the success of our daring exploits. Later in the city, we celebrated in a boisterous tavern, frequented by all manner of men, sailors, merchants, smugglers, pirates, and ordinary townsfolk. And what will you buy, Subatai, with your share of our newfound wealth? A fine new cloak, as befits a man of my position. A cloak? At a time like this, you think of nothing but a cloak? <laughs> and girls, Cimmerian. Sleek, beautiful girls. And you, my friend, will you also buy girls? Nay, Hyrcanian, why should a man buy that which he already has? <laughs> and buy my sword, Subatai. He shall buy no other while I live. Aye, and why should a man buy anything at all if he is as skilled in thievery as you three scoundrels? We looked around to find ourselves surrounded by soldiers of the king, and we were taken directly to the palace. These are the thieves of the tower, sire. Hmm. What daring, what insolence, what incredible arrogance you three have displayed. 
Yet from the bottom of my heart, I, King Osric of Samora, salute you for daring to defy the most foul of all that is evil, Falsa Doom. Forgive me, sire, but did you say doom? I Falsa Doom. Even my own daughter has fallen under that devil's spell. Falsa Doom. At last a name to go with the hated face of the leader of the whore that had slain my parents. A memory burned into my brain as though by a hot iron. Even as we speak, my daughter is on her way east to Tulsa Doom and his cursed mountain of power, where he intends to make her his. And that is why I summoned you here. I want you three to bring my daughter back to me. But, sire... You will be richly rewarded. Slave, pour out the rubies from the jar. Beautiful. I take all you can carry. There are enough for each of you to become master of your own kingdom. Only swear to me that you will bring my daughter back. Well, Conan, what say you? Sire, your daughter will be returned to you. It was dawn as I rode eastward toward the mountain of power and entered on the most dangerous enterprise of my life. Behind me lay Shatizar, where I had left Valeria, I, and Subatai. For how could I ask them to share my vengeful quest when they could scarcely even fathom my need to pursue it? It was near day's end when I arrived at a place where a series of great mounds rose before me. On each mound, impaled on stakes, were the bodies of men left to die by false doom. Beyond the last mound stood a hut where a wizened old man sat hunched in the doorway. I pulled up my horse and dismounted. Are you the caretaker of this strange place, old one? Great kings are buried in these mounds, warrior. And I sing to them of battles and heroes, women and riches. Here, no one bothers me, not even the master. The master? Dulce Doom, master of the mountain of Power. What do you know of him and his mountain? Only evil dwells there, and the greatest evil of all is Dulce Doom. Clearly, the Ancient One was no friend of Doom. He was, in fact, a wizard, learned in the ways of sorcery, and he had already divined some of my reason for being here. I stayed the night, and in the morning, exchanging my warrior's armor for a pilgrim's robe, I took my leave. Keep my sword well oiled, old one, and my horse well fed. For I will return and will have need of both. Have no fear, Cimmerian. And may your mission be crowned with success. I joined the throng of pilgrims trudging along the rocky road through the mountain of power, a short distance beyond the old one's hut. As we drew near the great shrine of doom, I stepped out of the column of pilgrims and was abruptly challenged by one of the priests. Where do you think you're going, brother? I have doubts, fears, O oh priest. Perhaps you can counsel me away from the others. Over here, where it is quiet? Why, yes, of course, brother. We walked slowly behind a large rock, out of sight of the rest. And before he even knew what happened, the disciple of said lay unconscious on the ground. And I, now dressed in his priestly raiment, mingled with the other priests, filing silently into Thulsa Doom's forbidding house of worship. At the entrance, each showed a bronze medallion with the symbol of the two snakes, like the one I had stolen on Shadazar. And when it came to my turn, I showed mine and was allowed to pass. Soon I stood in the great amphitheater, believing I had deceived the guards. There in the center above us all stood the awesome figure of Thulsa Doom, his hypnotic voice holding his fascinated followers in trance-like attention. The day of doom is at hand, my children. The day when I will order you to destroy the parents and leaders who have lied to you. The day your daggers will strike down for they fools who tried to deceive you, even as that dog of an infidel standing there has attempted to deceive me. Seize him! In the next instant, I was being hammered to the floor by a score of mailed fists. You broke into my temple in Terrazar, stole my property, and slew the serpent I raised from the moment it was born 20 years ago. If only Krom had granted me a minute longer, I would have destroyed you, too. My, such hatred. 
Why? You murdered my father and mother and all my people and stole my father's sword. It must have been long ago when I searched for the riddle of steel. But I tell you now, boy, steel is not strong. For what is steel compared to the hand that wields it? You condemned me to the Vanir Wheel of Pain. And behold what it did for you. The strength of your arm, the fire in your eye, the desire in your heart. All this I gave you. And what a pity. For now, my boy, you will have to contemplate all these things on the Tree of War. Rexor, crucify him. On the desolate, weathered plain beyond the Mountain of Power, they nailed me to the Tree of Woe. Beneath me the ground shimmered like heated iron. Above me the sun glowered down like a demon's eye, as the vultures hovered in the windless sky, waiting for me to die. They would not have long to wait, for I knew I would not live to greet another dawn. And then suddenly out of the horizon arose the form of a man, running effortlessly across the vast red landscape. I knew of only one breed of man who could run that way, a Hyrcanian step dweller. And praise Krom, I was right. It was Subatai. He took me down from the tree. Hold on, my friend. Valeria and I will take care of you until your wounds heal. Take me to the wizard. Then I lost consciousness, and they carried me to the wizard. Summoning all the powers at his command, he committed his sorcery in a fierce struggle against the evil spirits that reached for my soul. His body is twitching and heaving and wrapped with strange spasms. Wizard, what can we do? Just stay at his side, whatever comes. All through the night, the struggle went on. And then suddenly at dawn, I opened my eyes. The spirits are gone. We have one girl. Oh, Conan, the gods cannot separate us. Were I dead, I would return from the very pit of hell to fight at your side. The wizard had done his work well, and my wounds healed without trace. And before long, we were on our way to complete our mission. But my mission was still vengeance on the hated Thulsa Doom. But remember, first things first, Cimmerian. We'll steal the girl, nothing else. The other comes later. Is it agreed, Conan? Just the girl? I nodded my head but said nothing, and we rode on. It was night when we reached the river-filled gorge behind the Mountain of Power and picked our way up the massive cliffs to the mouth of a great cave lighted by the glow of a hot fire burning within. It is like a scene out of hell itself. That rock cauldron boiling, bubbling, constantly stirred by those ape-like men. They are trolls. No. Long ago, there were two races, men and the shadow dwellers. The men moved into the light, and these shadow dwellers, they... They live on human flesh. They are the fiends doing breeds to protect his children. And some of these children appear to be their dinner. How horrible. Look, over the other side. That must be the chamber of Full Sadoom himself. Subatai was right, and we made our way unseen across a footbridge spanning the great cavern. Pausing outside the chamber entrance, we peered inside. There on a throne sat Fulsa Doom, and before him there was a dancing girl, swayed, undulating. That girl, she must be Asanina, princess of Shadizar, daughter of King Osric. And as we watched, our fascination turned to horror as we saw the archfiend Fulsa Doom transform himself into the living image of Set. The serpent god. Ugh. Come, Cimmerian, let's do what we came to do and then get away from this foul place. Subatai seized a lighted torch from the wall and hurled it into the curtain lining the wall of the chamber. The curtains! They're on fire! Under cover of the thick clouds of black smoke that billowed through the chamber, we raced toward Yasemir, weapons in hand. Three of Doom's beastmen sprang forward to block us, but I cut my way through them with flashing steel. Valeria reached the princess first, but Yasanina tried to resist capture. Help me, Lord Doom, save me! Stop that stupid screaming wench! You're coming with us! Supertai, Valeria, head for the outside wall. I'll cover the rear. The climbing rope is secure. Let's go, everybody. Down the rope to the river. As we climbed down, one of Doom's men started cutting the rope. Faster, everyone! Faster! Luckily, by the time he cut through it, we had only eight or nine cubits to fall. But at that moment, on the ledge high above, 
Yaro, hand me the bow. Here it is, master. This twisting viper will make a deadlier arrow than any feathered missive. Death to the infidels. Oh, oh. Valeria, no, no. The living arrow of death had found its mark in Valeria. She gasped in pain as I pulled the serpent from her body and hurled it far down the frothing white water of the river. But it was too late. The poison was doing its deadly work. Hold me, Conan. It's so cold, so... Atop the great mound near the wizard's hut, we lay Valeria to her final rest on a funeral pyre of dried wood. As the flames rose straight up to meet the starry sky, Subatai wept softly. Since the death of my parents, there had been no tears left in my eyes. But in the depths of my soul, there were tears that night. The next day, having lost our horses, we wondered how we would defend ourselves against the attack we knew would surely come. The Princess Yasemina, still prisoner of misguided loyalties, was still defiant. Enjoy this day while you can, barbarian, for it will be your last. Silence, wench. I will not be silent, nor will Thulsa Doom. He has seen your fires and will come for me at sunset. And when he does, he will kill you. You little fool, do you think to frighten me with your childish blabbering? I was born on a battlefield. The first sounds I heard were the screams of dying men. Conan, Subatai, see what I have brought you. Spears, battle axes, armor. Where did you find these things, old one? I took these from the dead men impaled on the mounds. When Thulsa Doom comes, you will need them. They won't. With these weapons, we will be ready for him. The gods are pleased with you, Cimmerian. They will watch the battle. But will they help us, wizard? Mm, no. Then tell them to stay out of our way. We spent the rest of the day digging trenches and preparing traps of sharpened bamboo stakes, half concealed in sand. What happens now? You will see war, old man. War as you've never seen it. And soon they came, Doom's men, twenty iron-plated horsemen their fearsome battle cries rising above the thundering hoofbeats of their horses. We took cover behind our carefully prepared defenses. For the first time in my life, I prayed as one of the horsemen came directly at me. I've never prayed to you before, Crom, but now I ask that you grant me just this one thing. Grant me revenge. And I hurled my spear with all the ferocity at my command. And the horsemen crashed to earth, screaming in agony, even as two more of Doom's killers thundered down at me. I seized another spear. Have a free spear, dog. I have plenty to spare. The first fell to the ground impaled on the lethal shaft, and the second went down tasting the cold steel of my sword. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Subatai dispatch arrow after arrow with deadly accuracy. <laughs> like a turkey shoot, Cimmerian. Haven't had this much entertainment in years. But at that moment, a savage blow on my helmet knocked me to the ground. I turned to see hooves thundering down on me. And whirling around, I dove into the shelter of the nearest trench. The horseman tried to stop his mount. But he could not, and was crushed to death as the beast stumbled into the pit. But as I stood up, I heard a familiar voice, and someone stood above me at the pit's edge. Well done, barbarian. Very well done indeed. Rexor. I, infidel Rexor, who nailed your worthless hide to the tree of woe, and will now derive the utmost satisfaction from disemboweling you. He had leaped down into the pit and struck the sword out of my hand before I had time to ready myself for his attack. I stumbled and fell, and just as his sword was about to descend... Things have set a mighty sword arm from out of nowhere, staying my death stroke. Crumb's thunder. Have I gone mad? It's Valeria. And did you doubt me then, Conan, when I held you in my arms and vowed that even the gods could never sever us? My eyes! I cannot see that devil woman! In that fraction of an instant, I lunged for my fallen sword and turned in time to see a fully recovered Rexor advancing on me. Valeria! She's gone. She returned from the dead just to save me. Aye, barbarian. And now as thoughts are doom is my lord and master, I'll carve you in two. Nay, Rexor, your carving days are at an end. It is my turn now, and this is for my mother. <coughs> and this is for my father. <coughs> and this for me. Ah. Ah. 
He was dead. And now, only the most hated of all my enemies yet remained to face my vengeance. False of doom. And suddenly, I saw him on his horse, facing Princess Yasmina, still chained to a stone slab. Don't leave me here, my lord. Don't leave me, my father. Have no fear, beloved child. Your lord and master will not leave you to the clutches of these infidel dogs. No, my lord. No. No, don't shoot. Doom had placed one of his serpent arrows in his bow. But just as he fired it at Yasamina, Subatai raced in front of her. And with his shield deflected the arrow of living death, and it fell dead to the ground. Praise the gods! It was not exactly the gods who saved your precious hide, princess. I, your beloved master, would have killed you just now. And now I must kill him, and you must witness it. You will understand someday, when you are a queen. And as I walk slowly toward this king of darkness, sword in hand... God, no, my son. You will not kill me, for what son would kill his own father? And who is your father if it is not me? I am the wellspring from which you flow. When I am gone, you will never have been. What could your world possibly be without me? My son, my... Uh, and you would kill your own father? It was done at last. My father was the light of day. False of doom was my night. And now the night was ended. Doom's so-called children were now so many orphans. But like me, they were free at last. And now, Subatai, where will you go? North and east. And you, Sumerian, where will you go? South and west. We will meet again someday. I, good friend, if only at the gates of the world beyond. Thank you.